all right, leave for the week and start getting bullied in my own pulpit. All right, here we go. I sing a new song since Jesus came. Serve a new master. now how many of you have you this is the first time you've ever sang that song a bunch of you okay what's really neat about this song is it's got you can see there it's the echo i sing a new song i sing a new song since jesus came and it's just that simple since jesus came just the repeat so there's an echo to it and um if if you want to sing the echo that would be really cool Okay, now, if everybody sings the echo, should we, should we separate that? No, we'll just see how it goes, okay? We're going to sing it again. If you want to sing the echo, sing the echo. I sing a new song since Jesus came. Serve a new master. You can be seated. I love the, I say it over and over again. I love, this is one of, one of the best things we've done in a long time. And uh, uh, we can't let those die. I'm all for, I, there's a lot of the new music that I like. I do, a lot of new music that I like. But boy, oh boy, let's not lose the old music. I mean, we, we just need to hold that thing up there. Amen. Amen. Is somebody just agreeing with me out there? Okay, amen. All right. I thought somebody's interrupting me. Um, okay. Do we have any birthdays this last week? Any birthdays? Okay, no birthdays. Any anniversaries this last week? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, okay. Kevin and Amy had their I saw their pictures. Kevin, you look like you were about 20 years old in that picture. Uh, that was, or maybe maybe 15 uh, in that picture. That was great. I saw that on Facebook. So we're going to sing happy anniversary to Kevin and Amy. Ready? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Good job. All right. Um, I was told, I was told that there were quite a few desserts left over from, you're not sure there's enough? How about this, if I pick up a couple of pails of ice cream? I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Probably got ice all over it. Yeah, we'll check it out. Uh, and uh, but well, let's do this after the service tonight. Nothing fancy, no big deal. But uh, we just have to, we just have to clean up those desserts. I tell you what. Yeah, waste not, want not. Yes. Yes. Don't tell me about. Don't tell me about it. There's enough for us. Okay. All right. All right. Brother David, why don't you come? Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday School this morning. Nice day. Nice day this morning. And, um, well, I was thinking about, you know, I went camping. Me and Ida went camping last weekend, man. And, man, I'm camping with my best friend. I I just love it. And it's just me and her, and we, we had a joyful time. And as a uh, whole time, I'm always wondering, you know, Jesus is a friend, too. And I always worry, you know, maybe I, maybe I'm, too much with my wife than I am with Jesus sometimes. And uh, and I got this song, page 244, 
what a friend we have in Jesus. And it says, you're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you, John 15, 14. And I got to thinking about it, you know, we're to love our wives and honor them. So Jesus just tells me, the more I love her, the more I love him. And uh, I thought maybe let's sing this song together. Um, also, James uh, 5, 13 says, if any of you are afflicted, let him pray. And that's what we do in Sunday school, what we're doing right now. And if any, any of you uh, are married, let them sing songs. So let's sing about our friend Jesus this morning. Let's stand and sing, page 244. pray before Sunday school every morning we do this but that's what we're doing take things Lord if you got anything on your load on your mind or anything now's the time to share it and we'll pray about it and continue to pray about it and rejoice as well any pray, prayer requests that praises man we need to praise the Lord for everything that we got and all that he's done all good things come from the father of lights I think is the verse we learned to the kids and it's a good verse to remember and uh, so does anybody have any praises or prayer requests this morning? They want to. Yes, Miss Rose. Praise God. Yep. All things were made by him. Right? And without him was not anything made that was made. And what a beautiful creation. Yeah. Praise the Lord, Rose. Thank you. That's a good praise. Yes. Yes, today's today's 9-11. 
pray for all the families that have lost way back when. The change it did. Yeah, what was that, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The rescue work. Yeah. Yeah, the rescue workers and all them. Is this for the surgery? Okay. So we thank, yeah, we'll pray. That's what we're going to pray for this morning. So we need to pray that um, she's going to be rescheduled for Wednesday. So Rose is going to get her surgery on Wednesday. Pray that that works out in the Lord's will. Yes, Miss Vicki. Yes. Yeah, that would be something to be to be uh, saved by that, by some other circumstance that you wouldn't want to happen. So how many times you'd be, ah, oh, you're trying to get to work, and <laughs> yep, yep, you're all set, and here, come out for good. <laughs> wow, something to think about. Anything else? Uh, yeah, yes, Miss Penny. What's that? Oh, you did? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow. He wasn't looking for your cat, was he? Because <laughs> I hear there's a lot of them getting cats now. <laughs> yeah. That, they got a camera in Florida on a nest, and somebody's cat showed up. But it wasn't, a, it was a dinner. <laughs> But you can't have everything. <laughs> yeah, anything else anybody want to pray about? Praise the Lord this morning or anything going on? How about let's do this like Pastor does on Wednesday. You got any unspokens? I know I got some I don't want to talk about. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 unspokens. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, Wednesday night there. Them are kind of some of the most precious prayers. You know, I got things in my life I I want to pray about. And man, let's let's do that this morning together. Um also I wanted to pray about um I don't have a perfect marriage, just ask Ida. I do a lot of things, but I am so grateful for marriage and and I see widows and widowers and and um I always want to remember I thank God for the time that we have together because you never know. You know, and I and even divorce, I'm, I'm not immune to divorce. Me and I does not, and nobody is. Things happen, you know. I don't know. You don't know sometimes. You ever had a divorce in the family? And you're shocked. <laughs> you know, you're like, what? I thought everything was fine. Yeah, brother Eugene. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, that's how it is, you know. We're not immune. And I just, I want to pray, pray for marriage. Yeah, yeah. Every marriage has a problems. Every, you know, we do. We, we are uh, camping. I like camp. We learn to work together. We got a lot to learn. When we hook the trailer up, I don't have a camera. I have all that fancy. And we try to work together, yeah. So <laughs> we're getting her, though. We're getting her. But I just want to pray for the, is it the institution of marriage? Is that the right thing to say, Brother Joe? But, you know, we need to pray for it. It's, it's, it's a man and a woman. H how does it go in Genesis? All things were made by him. Or no, no, that was the first John. But in Genesis, when it talks about male and female, created he them. Yeah, you know, but yes, yep, we're, that's God's design. I want to pray about marriage this morning, and uh, 
the institution of it, the, that God, God created it during the beginning, along with the, the salvation plan. It was all part of his plan, and Jesus was there. So let's, let's bow our heads. Has anybody missed anything? Anybody want to come to the Lord for this morning? All right, let's bow our heads together in one heart. What, a, what an opportunity. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for all that have come to Sunday school this morning. I thank you for the fellowship that we have. Lord, I pray that uh, you would bring us together. You would open our eyes to see you this morning as we study Galatians, Lord, and grace. And Lord, just help uh, Brother Kendall as he delivers the message, Lord, that he uh, give him the words and the wisdom to, to teach us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to have a heart and an ear for you, Lord, to listen and hear and to do what it is, Lord, that we learn. And thank you so much for your word and the opportunity to share it, to, to open it up together and study it. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for Pastor and uh, Kathy being back, Lord. I just pray you'd be in their situation they're going through, Lord. Lord, watch over them. Continue to work, Lord. Help them, Lord, to keep their strength, Lord, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, Lord. And, Lord, we shall... Uh, fly as wings of eagles, Lord, and we shall uh, uh, run and not be weary, and we shall walk and not faint, Lord, that sometimes life's a run, sometimes it's a walk, Lord, and Lord, just these things that they're going through, Lord, just seems like a walk, they're, but Lord, I just pray you would, you would just work in that situation, Lord, and Lord, just be with him as he brings the messages, Lord, as he ministers to the, to the church members, Lord, and those around him, God, just give him strength, help him, Lord, help him to to keep an eye on you, Lord, and just to, as he is, Lord, and we're thankful for him, Lord. We're thankful for Pastor and just be in that situation with him. And, Lord, this morning is a message, Lord. Lord, we pray for the unsaved, God. Lord, we pray that you would lift their hearts, Lord, lift their eyes, lift them, open them to, to your word. And may the Holy Spirit speak to those that don't know you, Lord, Lord, that they would know that they're uh, a sinner in need of a Savior, Lord. Lord, just pray that this morning. We pray that together. For all the unsaved, God, be with all the missionaries and those that we support, God, Lord, throughout this church, Lord, just help them in the situations they're at right now, Lord. They might be going through trials and tribulations, Lord. Things are going on, Lord, and they're in danger. Maybe they're, um, maybe they're struggling too, Lord, with things that are going on over in every situation they could possibly be in, Lord. Lord, we pray you'd be with our missionaries, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to be attentive to their needs. Help us, Lord, to um, continue to support them in prayer and in our financials, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for this church, Lord. I pray you would keep it together, Lord. I pray that we would keep our eye on Christ, that we would have a, a pure, a pure as in um, a one mind, Lord, that, that Jesus is the leader, Lord, and we just pray that you would just uh, bring our hearts together, Lord, and we would rejoice in our salvation together. We would worship you on one heart, Lord, and just, just help all the ones that are suffering, Lord, just that are going through hard times that aren't be able to make it here, Lord, and or just going through struggles, Lord. We pray you'd be in each and every individual situation, Lord. I think of the unspokens this morning, God. We just pray with a whole heart, Lord, that you would be in each and every situation, Lord. You'd bless each and every person, Lord, in that situation they're going through. Often we're, um, the devil puts things in us to cause us to stumble, Lord, but you put things in our lives to cause us to stand. And I pray that each and every situation in them unspokens, Lord, that they would stand, they would stand with Christ, Lord, that they would have grace for grace, Lord, and they would just continue to look to you for uh, guidance through whatever situation it is. And Lord, just thank you so much, Lord, for your creation, Lord. As Rose talks about the, the um, cardinal, Lord, and with the eagle, Lord, the bald eagle, seeing them again, Lord, and so nice to see your creation you know, all things were made by you, Lord, and we're just thankful for that. Without you, nothing made was made, Lord. Lord, and these scientists and all these um, in the science community, Lord, I just pray you'd be with them. You would show them that, show them you. Often people, they start to learn about science and geography and all this, and they tune you out. They think that they somehow don't need you anymore, Lord. But Lord, you're you're in control, Lord. You are the creator, Lord, and we're thankful. And we worship you, our creator, this morning and, and together. And Lord, just um, 9-11, Lord, all the things that happened back then, Lord, it's 20-some 20, 20, 20 years ago, Lord, and we're just, we always look back and we pray for those, Lord, that might even still be affected, Lord. The ones that lost their lives are still affected, the families, Lord. 
and Lord, all the all the workers, Lord, that the rescue workers that came, Lord, and and got sick and passed away, and or maybe even suffering right now, Lord, we remember them, Lord, and we lift them up in prayer this morning. And Lord, um, with Rose, God, Lord, we just thank you for watching over her so far, Lord. We just pray that you would continue to keep her strength as she goes through all this pain she's going through, Lord, and Lord, in the heart of we for to weep when others weep, Lord, and laugh when others laugh, Lord. But right now we're 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 right there with Rose, Lord. We want to lift her up in prayer. We pray that it didn't work out last time, but maybe it's for good, Lord, that it didn't. It, it must have been for good, Lord, and we trust you for that. And Lord, now we ask, Lord, that, that this Wednesday it would work out, that she could get that surgery done, Lord, relieve that pain and make, make right what's wrong in her back, Lord. And Lord, we just pray you would touch that surgeon, Lord, guide his hand, Lord, as he does what he needs to do and be with uh, Rose's family, her husband, Lord, that he he remain strong, Lord, in this time, Lord, and be encouraging, Rose, Lord, the things that they're going through, Lord. And Lord, let us pray for marriage, Lord. Thank you for the, the sanctity of marriage, Lord, and how you was part of your design to the beginning of the Bible in, in Genesis, beginnings. Lord, I just thank you for that, and I pray for each and every marriage, Lord, every marriage in, this, in the church, Lord, around us, Lord, that you would be in each and every situation, Lord. Make us husbands, Lord, appreciative of our wives, Make us honor our wives, Lord. Teach us to, um, to listen. Teach us to, uh, to be an encouragement to our wives, Lord. And teach us, Lord, to be leaders of our house, Lord. And, Lord, to, um, to look to you, Lord, our, the God of our salvation, Lord. And just be with the men, Lord. Help men be men, Lord. We, we, we pray for that this morning. And for the women, Lord, we just pray for them, for the wives, Lord. Help them, Lord, in their, in their relationships, Lord, as they, they're doing with their kids, Lord. Help them. Lord, as they're raising their kids too, Lord, just be in each and every situation with our mothers, Lord. We're thankful for them. And Lord, just um, we just pray this morning with the Sunday school classes downstairs that that's all going well, Lord, and be with the teachers. Help them, Lord. And Lord, we just love you. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, I got uh, one last thing. Miss Kathy's going to be right here. Yeah, so she's not going to hear me. What I want to do is I want to kind of prepare, prepare. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So I have a blank that I got. How It talks about pastor and appreciation. So I thought that would be something good we could do. So um, coming up, we're going to start passing out a card. I have a card coming. and It's often hard to do one card. So I'm going to make like an insert in it and uh, so people can sign it and stuff. So we're going to start passing that around probably next Sunday. So... And uh, they're going through quite a bit, too, right now. And I thought we were thinking this would be a good opportunity. We could help them out, you know, things like that for what's going on over in Iowa and things, too. So, so if you guys got any other, and then we'll present it. Um, I want to do it at the beginning of October, not at the end or something like that. And fight, kind of fire off Pastor Appreciation Month. So, anyways, you know, we're not supposed to gossip, but maybe we can gossip about this. <laughs> okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. Man, you're a lively bunch this morning. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I had a wonderful day yesterday. I plan on having a wonderful day today, too. Not that uh, today's any different, but... Yesterday, I got to go spend the day in the woods, sitting in a deer blind with Tommy, and we even got to see some deer. We didn't get to shoot a deer, but we got to see some deer, and for the youth hunt, and we saw more squirrels than I care to admit. I told him, next time we come, I'm bringing the, the pellet gun, and you can have the crossbow, and I'll pick off squirrels while you pick off deer, but uh, anyway, we had a good time. And uh, looking forward to trying for a dough this weekend, all right? We'll see if we can get something in the freezer, but uh, maybe if not a dough, some squirrels. But uh, how many of you like squirrel? How many of you don't like squirrel? Like you've never, how many of you have never eaten squirrel? You're missing it. How many of you will never eat squirrel? Yeah, God bless us. See, you know, you guys aren't adventurous. You're not adventurous. You need to, you need to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. And uh, there's such a cute little animal, and it belongs right next to the mashed potatoes and gravy. 
And uh, I agree with you, but uh, no, we had a good time. Got to see an owl flying through the woods. If, if you've never seen that, for one, it's a creepy thing. But on top of it, those things are massive, and they just go like flying through the woods like nothing. It, it's pretty wild. But, uh, and you, you can't hear them. It's, it's, uh, it's a bit eerie, but anyway, a lot of fun. And uh, I wanted to share this um, blessing with you this morning, uh, I, I, it's a blessing to me and, and uh, unexpected. One of those things that God just says here, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a hug for a minute, you know, and I got to work this last week at uh, Partial Oil and Propane and walked in and uh, my direct supervisor said, the boss wants to see you in his office. Oh boy. I'm going, what, what did I do? I, you know, I start thinking over the last couple of weeks, did I mess something up? What in the world? Anyway, walked in. We've been trying to hire people for I don't know how long. It's been, it's been ridiculous. It is hard to, to hire people right now, especially when Taco Bell pays $15, $16 an hour. And so anyway, he sat me down and he just said, we've been trying to hire some people. And we, so we started reevaluating why in the world we're not getting bites on this job and he said what we found out is that compared to the rest of southeast michigan we're not paying competitively so you're getting a raise <laughs> blew me away i'm okay i'll take that uh but uh, anyway praising the lord for that and uh i was able to go into several of our public schools this last week trying to uh, get things set up for brother corn to be here and you pray for that i'm having a hard time getting schools to say yeah uh, we're actually getting quite a few shut down and uh, turned down. Now, God knows, and I'll tell you this, I've been with Brother David when he goes to a community where he doesn't get into a single public school and still wind up with 200 people in the church service uh, uh, that Friday night. And, and what he'll do is he'll go out and he will do, uh, uh, he'll, he'll beat the streets for them. And uh, we do a lot of promoting otherwise. There's different ways we can do it. But he, primarily the goal is to get into the public schools and be able to uh, get a, a good positive message to them, not a gospel message because that's not allowed, uh, but get a good positive message to them and then really promote them coming out on Friday evening to the church. So you pray that God would bring us where we need to go on that one. But anyway, Galatians chapter 2, and uh, we're reading uh, here in verses 1 through 10 is where we've already read. I won't read the entire thing this morning, but we'll kind of recap a little bit of what we've gone over so far. Uh, we've said that the gospel message, remember we're talking about grace and the gospel as we see in the book of Galatians. Also grace in the life of the Apostle Paul. We saw that in the, uh, mainly in chapter 1. But in chapter 2 here as well, a little bit of Paul's uh, testimony, the, the, the basis for his argument that he is teaching a proper gospel and uh, has an authority when it comes to the gospel. We see that in chapter 2. And so first of all, what we see in chapter 2 is that the gospel message is confirmed among believers. If we're going to make sure that we have the proper gospel, the right gospel message, it's important that there be some agreement on it. You know, when, when there's a lot of disagreement in regards to science, how can it be called science? I mean, really, how can you call something scientific if there is disagreement, disagreement going on within the science? Okay? How can you say that, that uh, uh, the origins of the earth are one way when there's disagreement in the science of it? Now, I 100% believe the scriptural account of creation, absolutely. And I believe that there's science to back it up. We'll go into that maybe one of these days. Uh, fascinating studies about how science and the scriptures... Did you know that, that... Anyway, I won't get too far into it. But the Bible is called the queen of sciences. Did you know that? That was, uh, that was much more widely accepted a long time ago. Uh, and, but the Bible being known as the queen of sciences and the fact that uh, uh, now there's this disagreement going on, something can't be right, okay? If you've got two things that are different, they cannot be the same, <laughs> okay? Uh, so 
uh, you know, when it comes to uh, differing ideas about what's going on in the world around us, listen, we've got to have a truth to base it on. Now, believing science and believing the Bible both require faith. There is an element of which science can be proven, of course, through the scientific method and through testing, but guess what? That's the same way we need to prove what we're teaching is the truth, is we've got to go and base it on a standard. The standard is the Word of God. Now, we've touched on this many times, but I think it's important that we just at least touch on it. One of these days, again, maybe when we're done with this study, we'll go on a very in-depth study on why this church has a firm stand on the fact that the King James Bible is the only, the only perfect Word of God for the English-speaking people. I strongly believe that, and there are things that prove that, I believe, and we'll look into that one of these days. But what I'm, all that I'm getting at with that one is if one Bible says this and one Bible says that, how can, they, how can they be the same? What does the Bible say? How can two walk together except they be agreed? All right, so there's got to be some agreement here among believers, and that's what happened with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul went back to Jerusalem after how many years? Do you remember? 14 years of preaching the gospel, and now the Judaizers are going, wait a minute, no, he's not preaching the right gospel. With the Judaizers being Jews themselves, they're coming in saying this is what you've got to do. You've still got to uh, go back to uh, the old way of doing things, even though you accept Christ. And uh, so Paul was going, well, I'll, I'll go to the church in Jerusalem then. He went to the church in Jerusalem, and he spoke there with, uh, uh, with uh, John and with James, the, uh, the brother of Jesus, who was the... Um, the pastor of that church, and John being the apostle to the Jews, and they agreed with him. They said, yes, what you're preaching is what Christ taught us. And so it was confirmed among believers, we must test any teaching of the gospel. We've got to test it. We saw that in verses 1 through 5 of chapter 2, that the testing is commanded by God. We've got to test it. If we're hearing something from the pulpit... Remember, I believe Pastor Rogers just this last week had mentioned that, that when you hear something and you just go, boy, that just doesn't sound quite right. It's not that you necessarily have to memorize the entire Word of God, okay? But to be familiar enough with the truth that something, when it comes up, that does, there, there's something in the back of your mind that's going, that just doesn't ring true to me for some reason. I need to study that out a little bit more. Well, that's what we should be doing. You know, there's a place on the back of your uh, bulletin for sermon notes. Take some things down. Some things maybe you'd want to study out just a little bit further for yourself to confirm that what you're hearing is the truth. We must test any teaching of the gospel. It's commanded by God. And then we also saw, yes, sir. Uh huh. Sure. There's been times I've done it. <laughs> go on, wait. Listen, I I had to go. Wait a minute. David was alive a thousand years ago. <laughs> that was one of them. Okay, but uh, uh, but no, there's there's been times where I've gone. Hmm. And my wife's. I got sore ribs afterwards because my wife's going, don't do that right now in church. But, uh, 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 and she's hearing me in the nursery right now. I love you, Ashley. Uh, uh, speaking of that, sorry, side note, I meant to say this earlier. We did have an anniversary last week. It wasn't our wedding anniversary. It was our 17th anniversary of our first date. <laughs> anyway, I knew that'd get at least a little bit of a good reaction. I used, the ladies are going, aw, Joe's just laughing. All right, <laughs> you know. And what's the anniversary of your first date, Joe? Uh, oh, oh, wow. That was, man, that was quick. I won't touch that one. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was 18 and she was 17. So anyway, mo- moving right along. Uh, 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 but the, I, my, I guess to answer your question, uh, that would be between you and, you and Jesus. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. You know, if it's something that, uh, that can wait, jot it down and wait. Yeah. I would recommend you no longer sit on the front row. <laughs> uh, but I, I understand in that sometimes those things can be just, it's, it's, like a, it's like a faucet dripping in the background. You're going, what is this noise? La- yesterday, oh my goodness, we have uh, got these walkie-talkies with these earpieces, you know, so we can whisper to one another. So Connor was in a different blind than us, so we were chatting that way. And uh, it, last night, it had been all day long. I don't know what was going on. Somewhere within a couple miles of us, there was a shooting party going on. I mean, there was just one after another, just, just gunfire all day long. And uh, I, I know that not too far down the road is the gun club. You know, I don't know where it was coming from, but Connor at one point was like, what is going on? Is, and it was just as a background noise. And you get those background noises, and maybe that right there is, you get that, boy, I need to study this out a little bit further. And it kind of becomes a background noise, an itch that needs to be scratched, right? And so uh, I guess between you and God and your better judgment, uh, uh, I will uh, uh, leave it there. But... Uh, the gospel message is confirmed among believers. This testing promotes unity among true teachers of the gospel. Uh, and true teachers of the gospel should be every one of us. And if we test the scriptures, if we go back and we look at the gospel, what, what it is we're teaching, when we say the gospel, I'm talking about doctrine in general even, but of course in Galatians they're talking strictly about the gospel. We need, we need if, if we had everybody convinced because they've gone to the standard and they can measure it and they know this is the truth and I believe this is the truth, well, then we're going to be unified. We, we, we don't have to argue about doctrine. We don't have to argue about the gospel. We, it's, we know the truth, okay? Now, I want to be careful to say this. There's a really interesting book out there that I would recommend you get, okay? Uh, and it is not... King James only, so take your Bible along with you. Uh, and it, it, is, it is written by a human being, okay? It's not the Bible. But it's a book called Tactics. Tactics. And it's written by a man by the name of Gregory Kukul. I believe it's K-O-U-K-H-A-L, something along those lines. Fascinating book on how to argue. My sisters don't need that book. Okay, no, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think they're going to watch this anytime soon, but it was kind of funny. Uh, one of the people that my parents were dealing with uh, down in Iowa said, yeah, this, or my, one of my, actually my sister down there said, I, you know, I spoke to your brother the other day and I listened to one of your sisters. <laughs> and I said, that's, that's about how it goes. She just laughed and said, yeah, you, you, listen, you talk to my brother, you listen to my sisters. Uh, but I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this book talks about uh, uh, arguing for your faith in a non-offensive way. And it's really fascinating. It is all about tactics of, uh, of being able to contend for the faith in a loving, caring way. And one of the things, that, and I believe just in the introduction that, that, he, that the author discusses, is how important argument is, even within the church. That he said, you'll never find the truth without some argument. Some good, uh, loving caring, not full of animosity, argument. And it's important that we have good discussions. Listen, Brother Joe already raised his hand asked a question. I, I appreciate that. I don't always have answers. I am not the answer guy. But you know what we can do is we can study things out together and we can confirm that they are true based upon what the Scripture says. And what does it do? It promotes unity through communication just talking with one another about it and having those discussions. Uh, it prevents unnecessary division. Boy, that's so, so needed. 
in this day and age, what, is, what seems to be the answer to uh, uh, I don't believe what they say or I'm going to argue with this person or whatever? What is it? Unfriend them on Facebook. I am unfollowing your Twitter. Whoop-de-doo. Okay, whatever. Uh, I, and then it overcomes external differences. And I believe that's what we had spoken about last week was that idea that it overcomes external differences. In verse 3 of chapter 2, Paul mentions a disagreement that had come be, uh, that uh, disagreement that he had with some of the members in the Jerusalem church. Some of them wanted Titus, a Gentile believer, to be circumcised according to Jewish tradition. But this was, of course, very important to the Jews. Titus wasn't a Jew. So did he need that that uh, uh, external uh, uh, display to be something that was important in his relationship with God. That's, that was the question. Was can someone be saved, trust Christ, and not follow Jewish tradition but still be okay with God? That was the basis of the whole argument that the Judaizers were trying to portray. That if you are going to get saved, yes, you are born into uh, uh, the family of God. Of course, Paul was the minister to the Gentiles, so he's out there telling Gentiles that they can now be part of the family of God. And the Judaizers were coming behind him saying, now that you're part of the family of God, you need to follow all of the traditions and the rituals of the Jewish law. And so that is where the confusion came in. And so in this case, Paul very quickly states his, his, not just his opinion, but he states his platform, if you would. This is where I stand because, what does he say in verse 3? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. We didn't make him do that. Why? Because that wasn't the basis of his relationship with God that he follow after Jewish ritual and tradition. That was not the basis of his salvation or the basis of the gospel to the Gentiles. And so we see that the gospel overcomes external differences. You know, you can go to different Baptist churches. I say Baptist because that's what we're... we're, Here we are, okay? Okay. I am not Christian because I'm Baptist. Okay? I am Baptist because of a whole bunch of other reasons. And again, we'll get into those one of these days. But in this particular case, you can go to Baptist churches in Africa, and you know what you're going to find? Incredible external differences in how we approach things when it comes to church, when it comes to worship, when it comes to our relationship with God. You don't have to talk to too many missionaries to find out that it is vastly different to go to church in a different culture. How many of you have ever been to, been to a church in a different country, not Canada? Okay. Somewhere else. Where have you been, Brother Matt? That's awesome. I've been to Haiti. Very close. Neighbors there. Where have you been, Brother Dave? Italy. Awesome. Where, who else had their hand up? You, Ecuador, Mexico, and London. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. What you're going to find, I've been able to go to Mexico and I've been able to go to Haiti as far as other cultures are concerned. I've been to Canada and they're just different anyway, okay? But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, but, but you go to these places and what you're going to find are incredible external differences when it comes to worship but that is not the basis for the gospel that is not something that is to be judged to determine whether or not a person is right with god okay let me be careful we've said it over and over and over and it kind of keeps coming up this is why we can't compare ourselves among ourselves 
because it's, it's not apples to apples. There's differences across the world when it comes to cultural differences. Now, if those cultural differences are not affecting this right here, if they all still line up with the standard, then those external differences do not matter. Let me ask you this, are external differences important? Absolutely. Absolutely. But do we keep people out of church because of external differences? You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Some people, they don't want to come to church because of the uncomfortable feeling that that brings because, well, I'm not like them or they're not like me or whatever. That's, no, that's not the point. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. It has nothing to do with how you dress. It has nothing to do with how you look. It has nothing to do with what kind of car you drive or what kind of house you live in. It has nothing to do with the traditions or culture that you're a part of. It's have you followed the pure gospel that is laid out in the Word of God. And that's the whole point. Why is it that, that we, you know... There are missionaries that come off the field because it's too hard in that country to get the gospel out. Now, I'm not demeaning them in any way. Guess what? They, they had enough nerve to go, right? That is a big deal in and of itself. But I have heard story after story after story of missionaries that come back because they went somewhere on the mission field and within their four walls of their home, they tried to set up a little America. And they've got their American flags everywhere, and they've got, uh, you know, all that. And then they, then they go to church, and they try to do church just like they do in America, and it doesn't work. And they get discouraged and despondent, and they, they hightail it out of there. Why? Because they didn't realize that just because it's done that way here doesn't mean it has to be done that way somewhere else to honor the Lord. And so anyway, that's not the direction I meant to go this morning, but it overcomes external differences. If we look at, uh, if we test the gospel to determine whether or not it, they are teaching the truth, then all those externals, God deals with that. That's not for me to deal with. Should I be, use some discernment? Absolutely. God gave you the Holy Spirit for a reason. But that's between you and God. God, listen, God's not going to use you and me to walk up to someone and say, you are living in sin and you're doing it wrong. Okay? There's places and times for all of that and uh, we're not it. Okay? <laughs> let, let God do his job. So, it overcomes external differences. Let's move on. The testing defends against false gospels. Verses 4 and 5, let's take a look at that. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. By the way, that first little phrase here, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in. You know, if you're going to join Crossroads Baptist, Crossroads Baptist Church, there is, there's a gauntlet you've got to go through. No, it's not that bad, I promise. Uh, but we cannot bring people in unawares, Brother Joe, can we? We need to know that they are part of the body of Christ before we accept them into the body of Christ. Bringing in a foreign body doesn't usually go too well for the body. That's something that needs to be taken care of. And so here, they had brought people in. Yeah, let's just bring anybody in. And they had brought false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Again, what's going on here is, we're going to talk about this in just a little bit, uh, uh, but they came in seeing their liberty that they have in Christ. In other words, Gentiles being born again, that's you and me, by the way, being born again, being able to be saved, being part of the family of God, and we have liberty because we're not under the bondage of all the tradition and all of the law and all of the things that the Jews had going on in their world. 
And so they're going, wait, this doesn't make any sense. And why? What were they trying to do that they might bring us into bondage? They wanted to make this something more than what it was. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. In other words, he's saying, we didn't even let them, we didn't let them teach. They wanted to tell us all these things, and we said, no, no, that's not, that's not the truth. And so it caused this big stink in the church, and so they went, again, they went to get approval from the church in Jerusalem that what they were saying was true. So the testing defends against false gospels. We need to examine the teaching of others, first to obey God, but second to promote unity, which in turn helps def defend against false gospels. God used unity to, define, to defend them against false doctrine. As we Christians splinter and divide over petty arguments, more of us remain vulnerable to teaching which contradicts the word of God. Let me kind of define that a little bit further. As we start looking at the externals and splitting over those, as we start disagreeing over the externals, and I'm going to leave the church over that. Okay. I want to see how deep I want to go into this with three minutes left. Okay. God has established a few institutions for the safety of the believer. The first thing that God instituted on this earth for mankind was family. Let me back that up. It was a relationship with God. After the relationship with God was a relationship with family. After that relationship with family was a relationship with the church and with their religion and after that was their relationship with their government. Government wants to say, we're the most important. But without a strong relationship with God, you do not have a strong family. And without strong families, you do not have strong churches. And I'm going to say this, and I believe it with all my heart, without strong churches, you do not have a strong country. The Bible says, blessed, the nation, blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. It all goes back to the foundation of individual relationship with God. When we leave church over something petty, and by petty, it might seem really big to you, but really think about it. Is it really that important? Okay? When we leave a church... We are leaving a God-instituted, God-ordained umbrella of protection for our family, for our own relationship with Christ. The church is held up by our relationship with Christ. It's held up by strong families. But listen, when, when members of the church leave, not only does it weaken the church, but they've just left God-given protection against false teaching, against all these other things they're going to face. Now they're going to face them on their own? Why is it so important that we be in church? I'm talking to people in Sunday school for pity's sake. Why is it so important that we be in church? Because this is where you find a... a an element of protection against the world, the flesh, and the devil. This is where you're going to find a fellowship that will help to sustain your relationship with Christ. This is where you're going to find teaching of the standard, teaching right from the Word of God. Well, I can find that on my own. Sure, you can find that on your own, just like you can learn to be uh, you know, a, 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 a brain surgeon on your own. It'll work a whole lot better if you have somebody teaching you who already knows it, right? I mean, could you self-study and pass a test to become a brain surgeon? I don't know. Maybe Brother Joe would know. I, I really have no idea, okay? That's a really good way to put that. I don't know if you all heard that or not. You're going to have the book knowledge, but you're not going to have the practical way to apply it. That's really good. God has given us a pastor. 
God's given us teachers. God's given us each other with differing backgrounds, with differing understandings. Why? Of the practicality of the application of this book. How many of you know everything? I know no hands are going up because no one in here is 13 years old. No, we don't know everything. Therefore, guess what? Every one of you is my teacher. Everyone in here knows something I don't know. So I can listen to you just like you're listening to me. Just because I'm up here doesn't mean that I'm the only teacher here this morning. Okay? We need the church. And false teachers will sneak into the church to destroy the church because the church is a God-ordained institution that props up this nation. And uh, anyway, we'll not go any further down that rabbit hole this morning. Good stuff. Lord, we're grateful for your love and your goodness. Thank you Lord, for your, uh, Lord, you ordaining in order to things. And Lord, I pray that we would operate within that order. And Lord, that we would be here in our place. Lord, as we uh, deal with these false teachings in the world around us, Lord, would you help us to have the understanding that we need of your word and your truth to fight against the falsehoods around us. Lord, help us to test these things that we are saying is true against the, the standard. And Lord, that your word would be magnified, that your holy name would be magnified in this place. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.